Welcome to the Daily Chronological Bible. My name's Hunter, and we are reading through the Bible in chronological order as a single story. And that story is all about Jesus. We will look at this whole book with our eye on Jesus. It is a revelation of him, and he has revealed to us the heart of the Father. He has invited us all to participate with him in the life that he shares with the Father and the Spirit. Today, we are in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, verses 21 through chapter 5. We're reading from the New Living Translation. This is the word of the Lord. Deuteronomy 3, 21. At that time, I gave Joshua this charge. You have seen for yourself everything the Lord your God has done to these two kings. He will do the same to all the kingdoms on the west side of the Jordan. Do not be afraid of the nations there, for the Lord your God will fight for you. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord and said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you have only begun to show your greatness and the strength of your hand to me, your servant. Is there any God in heaven or on earth who can perform such great and mighty deeds as you do? Please let me cross the Jordan to see the wonderful land on the other side, the beautiful hill country, and the Lebanon mountains. But the Lord was angry with me because of you, and he would not listen to me. That's enough, he declared. Speak of it no more. But go up to Pisgah Peak and look over the land in every direction. Take a good look. But you may not cross the Jordan River. Instead, commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead the people across the Jordan. He will give them all the land you now see before you as their possession. So we stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. Deuteronomy 4. And now, Israel, listen carefully to these decrees and regulations that I am about to teach you. Obey them, so that you may live, so you may enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add or subtract from these commands I am giving you. Just obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you. You saw for yourself what the Lord did to you at Baal Peor. There the Lord your God destroyed everyone who had worshipped Baal, the God of Peor. But all of you who are faithful to the Lord your God are still alive today, every one of you. Look, I now teach you these decrees and regulations, just as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Obey them completely and you will display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations. When they hear of all these decrees, they will exclaim, How wise and prudent are the people of this great nation! For what great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call on him? And what great nation has decrees and regulations as righteous and fair as this body of instruction that I am giving you today? But watch out! Be careful never to forget what you yourselves have seen. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live. Be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. Never forget the day when you stood before the Lord your God at Mount Sinai, where he told me, Summon the people before me, and I will personally instruct them. Then they will learn to fear me as long as they live, and they will teach their children to fear me also. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while flames from the mountain shot into the sky. The mountain was shrouded in black clouds and deep darkness, and the Lord spoke to you from the heart of the fire. You heard the sound of his words but didn't see his form. There was only a voice. He proclaimed his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to keep, and which he wrote on two stone tablets. It was at that time that the Lord commanded me to teach you his decrees and regulations, so you would obey them in the land you were about to enter and occupy. But be careful. 
You did not see the Lord's form on the day he spoke to you from the heart of the fire at Mount Sinai. So do not corrupt yourselves by making an idol in any form, whether of a man or a woman, an animal on the ground, a bird in the sky, a small animal that scurries along the ground, or a fish in the deepest sea. And when you look up into the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the forces of heaven, don't be seduced into worshiping them. The Lord your God gave them to all the peoples of the earth. Remember that the Lord rescued you from the iron-smelting furnace of Egypt in order to make you his very own people and his special possession, which is what you are today. But the Lord was angry with me because of you. He vowed that I would not cross the Jordan River into the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your special possession. You will cross the Jordan and occupy the land, but I will not. Instead, I will die here on the east side of the river. So be careful not to break the covenant the Lord your God has made with you. Do not make idols of any shape or form, for the Lord your God has forbidden this. The Lord your God is a devouring fire. He is a jealous God. In the future, when you have children and grandchildren and have lived in the land a long time, do not corrupt yourself by making idols of any kind. This is evil in the sight of the Lord your God and will arouse his anger. Today I call on heaven and earth as witnesses against you. If you break my covenant, you will quickly disappear from the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. You will live there only a short time then you will be utterly destroyed. For the Lord will scatter you among the nations, where only a few of you will survive. There, in a foreign land, you will worship idols made from wood and stone, gods that neither see nor hear nor smell. But from there you will search again for the Lord your God, and if you search for him with all your heart and soul, you will find him. In the distant future, when you are suffering all these things, you will finally return to the Lord your God and listen to what he tells you. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the solemn covenant he made with your ancestors. Now search all of history from the time God created people on earth until now and search from one end of the heavens to the others. Has anything as great as this ever been seen or heard before? Has any nation ever heard the voice of God speaking from fire, as you did, and survived? Has any other God dared to take a nation for himself out of another nation by means of trials, miraculous signs, wonders, war, a strong hand, a powerful arm, and terrifying acts? Yet that is what the Lord your God did for you in Egypt, right before your eyes. He showed you these things so you would know that the Lord is God and there is no other. He let you hear his voice from heaven, so he could instruct you. He let you see his great fire here on earth, so that he could speak to you from it. Because he loved your ancestors, he chose to bless their descendants, and he personally brought you out of Egypt with a great display of power. He drove out nations far greater than you, so he could bring you in and give you their land as your special possession, as it is today. So remember this and keep it firmly in mind. The Lord is God both in heaven and on earth, and there is no other. If you obey all the decrees and commands I am giving you today, all will be well with you and your children. I am giving you these instructions so you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Then Moses set apart three cities of refuge east of the Jordan River. Anyone who killed another person unintentionally without previous hostility could flee there to live in safety. These were the cities, Bezer on the wilderness plateau for the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead for the tribe of Gad, Golan and Bashan for the tribe of Manasseh. This is the body of instruction that Moses presented to the Israelites. These are the laws, decrees, and regulations that Moses gave to the people of Israel when they left Egypt. And as they camped in the valley near Beth Peor, east of the Jordan River, this land was formerly occupied by the Amorites under King Sihon, who ruled from Heshbon. 
But Moses and the Israelites destroyed him and his people when they came up from Egypt. Israel took possession of his land and that of King Og of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. So Israel conquered the entire area from Aror at the edge of the Arnon Gorge all the way to Mount Sirion, also called Mount Harmon. And they conquered the eastern bank of the Jordan River, as far south as the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. Deuteronomy 5 Moses called all the community of Israel together and said, Listen carefully, Israel. Hear the decrees and regulations I am giving you today, so that you may learn them and obey them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord, for you were afraid of the fire and did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me, and I passed his words on to you. This is what he said. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind, or an image of anything in the heavens, or on the earth, or in the sea. You must not bow down to worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations, of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkey and other livestock, and any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, But the Lord your God brought you out with his strong hand and powerful arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord spoke these words to all of you assembled there at the foot of the mountain. He spoke with a loud voice from the heart of the fire, surrounded by clouds and deep darkness. This was all he said at the time, and he wrote his words on two stone tablets and gave them to me. But when you heard the voice from the heart of the darkness while the mountain was blazing with fire, all your tribal leaders and elders came to me. They said, Look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice from the heart of the fire. Today we have seen that God can speak to us humans, and yet we live. But now, why should we risk death again? If the Lord our God speaks to us again, We will certainly die and be consumed by this awesome fire. Can any living thing hear the voice of the living God from the heart of the fire as we did and yet survive? Go yourself and listen to what the Lord our God says. Then come and tell us everything he tells you, and we will listen and obey. The Lord heard the request you made to me, and he said, I have heard what the people said to you, and they are right. Oh, that they would always have hearts like this that they might fear me and obey all my commands. If they did, they and their descendants would prosper forever. Go and tell them, 
return to your tents. But you stand here with me so I can give you all my commands, decrees, and regulations. You must teach them to the people so they can obey them in the land I am giving them as their possession. So Moses told the people, You must be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, following his instructions in every detail. Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Thank you for joining us at the Daily Chronological Bible. You can find out more about our other podcasts at dailyradiobible.com where people from all around the world come to join us in this journey through the scriptures where we allow the scriptures to point us to the God who is love, the God revealed to us fully in Jesus. Again, that website is dailyradiobible.com. Until tomorrow, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. Thank you.